Hey, so my name is Frank Cox. I'm known as the Barbecue Pit Engineer, and uh, you can find all you need to know about me on this channel, or you can join our private community over at SmokerBuilder, the letter U, dot com. And this, we kind of talk about designing these pits and how to build them and all of that kind of stuff. So if you're new to barbecue, that's a great place for you to get started and learn the very basics of pit design, what kind of pit's best for you, whether you're going to build it yourself or have someone else build it. So I invite you to join our community. Anyway, back on into business here. So this is a, essentially a 300 gallon or so offset that I built. Uh, you'll see videos popping on this uh, channel over the last couple of years that I've recorded but never edited and published. Um, and the way I designed this pit was to have one big cook chamber but two separate doors. This thing cooks with one of our vertical baffles that we talk about all the time and it cooks from the top down. Um, that's real secret to our style of barbecue. So anyway, I'm gonna open this thing up. Come on up here and look at it. Don't promise not to laugh at me. So this has been linseed oil covered on the outside. I'll just kind of show you that real quick. And uh, there's a lot of videos on the channel here where I talk about how to re-season the outside of your pit. In this case, we're gonna clean, scrub, and then season the inside of this one. But you can see, I mean, the pit's not like falling apart or nothing. It's just got some surface rust. It's easy enough to fix with a coating of oil on the outside. And then getting on in on the inside of the pit, after we cooked on this pit last time, we uh, power washed it and scrubbed it, right? But we were jammed up. I didn't have time to like do a seasoning coat in here. And I figured why not let it go for a while and do this video. So this has been sitting, like I say, for, I don't know, two or three months, something like that. It's, ex it's exposed to the elements out here on my little farm here. And uh, we don't really give uh, too big of a, of a worry about like rain getting in these pits and stuff like that. Typically when I set these up to store them for a while, I'll leave it tilted down and my drain is all the way at this end inside the warmer. So it actually just runs out whatever comes in. But you can see it's pretty scaly. Like there's some, this is some surface scale. Below that is bare metal. It's not a big deal. You can see it's wiping off with my hand. Um, some of that is just residual from like uh, just the seasoning process or whatever was there. Um, just elements, whatever. You can see that in the bottom here where there's like some, like looks like ash or something that came off the top and just kind of fell in the bottom. So if your pit looks like this, don't worry about it. It's easy enough to fix. I've got a really cheap Harbor Freight power washer here. It's just got cold water hooked up to it. It's easy enough just to run this thing out here. Um, keep your power up out of the, out of the water puddle, of course. And uh, the first step we're gonna do is I'm just gonna power wash the entire inside of this pit. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna move over to my vertical here, which is on the that end of the pit. I'm gonna move over to my vertical, power wash it. Once I get everything rinsed out a little bit and get it all uh, just kind of draining out, I use a flat scraper, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And uh, I'm gonna scrape the surface for any buildup or anything that's left in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and scrub it with a scrub brush. So here, I'm just going to get to it. Joe's going to video me. You're going to see the master at work here. This ain't the first pit I've cleaned. Here we go. Okay, so uh, that was one round with the power washer. It probably took me, I don't know, probably 15 minutes, I guess. So maybe a little bit longer. I didn't like focus real hard on it. Um, anyway, now th we're at the point where we're gonna take that scraper. Where'd the heck is that thing, Joe? Over here. Oh, here it is. This is just an old spatula I got given to me by some old thing that happened. I don't even remember. Um, it's got a little kind of a sharp edge. It's not super sharp. I recommend if, if you uh, don't need something this huge, use like a four inch, uh, like a drywall knife or something. 
and you literally just take it just like that. I mean, there's no mystery to it. Just, just, just scrape like that, right? And you're looking for anything that won't come up with a brush, right? We're gonna take the brush here in a little bit. That brush he's got right next to him. So we're gonna go to town inside here. All right, guys, so uh, anyway, I scraped that whole thing with that little scraper scrape. And uh, next step is we're gonna scrub with the scrubber and then we're gonna rinse it out again. So here we go. Get the scrubber wet, get the doors wet a little bit. Just get everything wet a little bit. I always start at the top and I work down anytime I do any of this. So like I'll start up here with the doors, then I'll do the roof. So then I'll just kind of go to the bottom. By the way, a little tip, don't let your doors slam shut on you. Um, of course, do what I say, not as I do. We have a door safety prop that belongs here that prevents this door from slamming shut on you. If somebody was to jerk the trailer or you got wicked with the scrub brush and he goes in, just put something there. Counterweights don't hold the door open good enough, in my opinion. Even with a counterweight, the door could slam shut. So um, we sell those at smokerplans.net. Matter of fact, if you're all snooty and have a plasma table or something like that, and you want to do it yourself, we even sell the CNC file for it. So, with instructions on how to put it on. And uh, by the way, we're not using any cleaners or nothing here. We're just scrubbing. You know, just pressure washer and scrub. Is there a reason we're not using cleaners? Yeah, just because I don't think it's necessary, but like if you want to, you can, but just get them all out of there. Like, anything you wouldn't clean dishes with, I wouldn't use in here. That makes sense. Sounds like good advice. I suppose if it's good for dishes, it's good for your cooker. <laughs> You know, they always get all weird about cast iron and stuff and putting soap on it, right? Well, my kids will tell you they hate it, but I cook with cast iron. Every single thing I cook is cooked. Even in the house on the stove, I cook with a cast iron skillet. So I got two of them. And you know that you're good at it whenever the bottom of your skillet is like smooth like a baby's butt, right? Because that means you've been cooking in it a lot, you're taking good care of it, it's good and seasoned. And uh, the difference between seasoned and dirty is if you can take a white towel and you can wipe on it like a paper towel and it comes off brown or black and it's not hot, that's dirty. So, uh, you should be able to wipe that towel across it and it should be smooth, first of all, and it should not be black and dirty or anything like that, right? Honestly, it's kind of the same with your pit, but I don't know anybody's pit that's that clean. So anyway, the way to do it is just like normal seasoning on cast iron, that's fine. Don't change any of that. But if you just use really hot water in the sink, right? You could also use really hot water here and that actually will release all that garbage and get it down a drain. In this case, I don't have hot water power washer, so we're using cold water, but um, you can just put a dot, just a small little dot of Dawn dish soap in that skillet. Hit me in the comments if you hate me now. Little dot of Dawn dish soap in the skillet. Hit it with one of those green and yellow Scotch-Brite, you know, sponge Scotch-Brite pads. Just a little bit, rinse it real good with hot water. Put that thing directly on the stove burner as hot as it'll get, you know, dry it off, whatever. Put it on the burner and do that pretty fast, you know. You'll evaporate all the water off the skillet, dot of oil in the middle of it and wipe it around. You shouldn't have so much oil in a skillet that it's like puddling. Same here. You don't want all that oil. You want to have thin, thin, thin. You wipe it on, wipe it on, wipe it on and burn that thing hot and it should start smoking, right? You can also do that in the oven. That's actually what you're supposed to do at 450 degrees. If you use like vegetable oil or something. Um, there again, oil, doesn't matter. Whatever kind you're eating with, you know. But in this case here, we're gonna use Pam and we're gonna do the same thing. The goal is vegetable oil has a 
lower smoke point than like, like a lot of other things, right? So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to get this old polymerize on here. We're gonna burn it really, really hot. And that polymerizing is, uh, that's making that seasoning coat that doesn't wipe off, right? That's what we're doing. Anyway, always wash the top of your cooker because that's the crap that falls on your brisket that you can't see when it gets absorbed into the tallow, right? It's a food producing appliance. You should take care of it, keep it clean. Food producing. All right, I dig it. Now we gonna give it a wrench. Ready? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> better in there doesn't it i think so it's on in there you can still see a little surface rust but it's not like food flaky you could keep scrubbing that if you want um honestly at the bottom of the pit like that a little bit of rust down there doesn't really phase me at all um you can just you can still see it's still got such a nice keep seasoning coat if i had a white glove it would well it, there's a little of that black i was just talking about maybe we ought to scrub her again a little bit more but Anyway, I think you get the point, right? So now there's no sense in you watching me keep doing this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and scrub this up and then when it's time, we'll start uh, burn a fire in this thing and get it seasoned. So here we go. Worst parts over. We got a bar buster. Uh oh, you welded that one, didn't you? <laughs> had to be all right guys so we're going to season the pit now um we just got done washing it i pulled it over here by the wood pile in the shade where i can work on it for a little while and uh keep in mind the inside of this smoker is still wet so we're going to build a fire first and that fire is going to heat the heat the pit up and get rid of all the moisture that's in it now we don't want to get it so hot though that when this oil goes on it just evaporates right so like imagine you ran this thing at 500 degrees uh, the oil's not going to have time to get in the pores before it actually like smokes off. So we want to go ahead and just keep it at a lower temperature, run the pit, dry it out. Then we're going to go in there and spray everything metallic inside with some kind of cooking oil of some kind. It can be an aerosol like this Pam. It can be the cheap stuff like Great Value. It doesn't really matter. You can use avocado oil and wipe it on with a towel. Nobody cares really how you put it on, just it needs to be food grade on the inside of the pit. So anyway, I'm gonna get a fire lit here and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so uh, we're here on the firebox end of Bingo and uh, I'm, I'm gonna build a wood fire just with like wood cuttings and stuff like that from my splitting pile over here. And uh, I've just got all that laying on the very bottom here. It's a lot of fine stuff, small splits. Um, things like that from where I split the wood. So I'm going to use the old Texas match here, um, just like you probably saw in my last video. And I'm going to get this fire started and then I'm going to transition over to some splits. All right, guys, so we got a little bit of a cold bed established here now. Um, I actually shut the stack down a little bit just to kind of calm the fire down because it was rip roaring. And uh, what we're going to do now is just add some splits. Now, I've got a uh, little array of sizes here. I like to stay somewhere around three inches. You can see there's a couple different, like this one's a little bigger, this one's a little smaller. I put the smaller splits towards the bottom first and I'm gonna just build me like a little log cabin there. So I'll usually start with the ones that go long ways in there. I'll start with them like this. And that's gonna give me a little bit of distance in between those logs so I can get air movement in between those. Then I'll put my next stack right up on top that and now it just depends on how hot we're trying to run whether or not i'm going to add two more logs on this for the beginning of our of our uh, seasoning session here it's not really a cook 
for the beginning of our seasoning session, I'm wanting to run below 300 because I just want to dry the pit out right now because there's still water in there from when I power washed a minute ago. Um, so I'm going to probably just run like a medium sized fire. Now, if I wanted to get this thing up for like seasoning the outside of it and run super hot, then I'm going to add probably two more logs on top of that. Now, another thing I like to do is let these logs catch completely before I shut the door. Once those logs completely catch on fire, I'm going to shut my door down and just maintain an air gap because on this pit, my air gap in the door is my air inlet. That's how I'm controlling my temperature is a combination of how big the coal bed is, how big the stack of wood is that's on fire, and how far open my door is. We're just going to let these logs catch. So um, that's a really good fire right there. I'm just going to kind of let this thing cruise for a while. Now, once this set of logs gets turned into charcoal, it's going to actually be a lot hotter fire. That's when I'm going to amp it up. I should be dried out by about that time. So that'll be about probably, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or something like that. So I'm not going to run the camera the whole time, but uh, you'll see it here in about 45 minutes, what that fire looks like. And uh, then we can start uh, oiling up the inside of the chamber. Pretty nice. I'm just running probably two fingers or two, you know, inch and a half, two inches, something like that for my door gap right here. So, all right, guys, let's look, check in on this fire real quick. Yeah, so you can see uh, it's starting to turn into a coal bed here. I'm just going to let it ride a little bit. I'll probably throw two splits on top. Another quick tip is a great benefit of uninsulated fireboxes is you can set your logs right up on top and you can kind of preheat them. Um, we're trying to get rid of all this radiant heat anyway. Well, might as well put it to work, you know. So I'm going to grab the two splits that have been on here the longest and I'm going to set those right up on top. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera back over there now and I'm going to show you just spray in the inside of the chamber. And uh, then we're going to talk about like setting into the, the, the cook-in cycle. Now you've probably done this before. Uh, it's not rocket science. We're literally going to spray the inside of this pit. Um, now earlier I said I was going to try to let all the water dry out in this pit and get it up where it, all the oil will stick. And it's pretty close to that. It's not like down in the bottom where the water runs out. Like there's a little bit of condensation down there still but I ain't really sweating that. As I cook, it's gonna continue to build like rendered fat and stuff like that down there. That's not gonna be a big deal. Primarily, I'm looking to protect my cooking grates and a little bit under the grates and the rest of the top is what I'm mostly worried about seasoning. And uh, I, hope I hope I got enough oil. So we'll see. Here we go. Now, another thing I, I should point out real quick is you don't want to get it too thick at any one spot, you know, because that, that fat will start to run or the oil, whatever you're using. We're just trying to season it. We're not trying to like coat it like paint, right? On that back side, I can actually see uh, the, the steel absorbing a lot of this oil. Well, that fire is really happy in there. So uh, that's pretty close to like all the spray and oil in there I need to do. I could do inside the warmer too, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm not cooking in there at this moment. Now, the next step from this is just to run this thing about 350, 400 degrees or as hot as you can go. Um, I've even ran some of the smaller pits around 500. Uh, we're just trying to get that oil coating to kind of set in and season and polymerize as much as possible. And if you're burning in the outside of your pit, it's the same drill. You can do both at the same time. It's not a big deal. Um, you just, on the outside, you can use anything you want, like boiled linseed oil is what I like. You could spray it down with Pam. The difference is, is that like, I let a pit go like this, like we got this one all the way down to bare metal with a surface conditioning tool. And there's a video about that earlier, uh, pretty, about two years ago on my channel where you can see how we use that surface conditioning tool to remove all the, pro the paint off the propane tank and some of the mill scale. 
and then we let this thing sit out and like just let it rust it doesn't even matter because we're going for that vintage patina look now if i was to spray this down with pam it's going to turn black like an iron skillet i'm not going to get that bronze rusty you know color that i want um you know we've even coated some of these pits with uh like a bluing compound or blacking compound and uh, that acid causes this like from bare clean metal with no oil on it it'll cause this to hyper like to happen really fast some guys use like uh, other kinds of acids and stuff to force this and uh, anyway once you get that when you put boiled linseed oil on or some other kind of oil like that it's got a very low smoke point it winds up bringing all that color out and it polymerizes as well so it's the same thing as putting paint on here or anything else keep it on the outside only and then I got to put a little disclosure in there about any time you're using towels or any kind of thing like that to wipe oil uh, make sure that you dispose of those in a safe manner because they will catch on fire spontaneously had it happen so and if I don't tell you everybody in the comments is gonna tell you that I should have told you so that's part of that so anyway we're just gonna let this thing roll we'll be ready to cook on it next time so hey if you found this video helpful uh, leave some stuff in the comments there um, it's not rocket science what I covered today, but I get a lot of questions about it, especially from people that are new to barbecue. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. You're not going to burn through. You're not going to like flake rust off like you would see delaminating steel. None of that's going to happen. Let the beauty of the natural steel shine through. Let a little bit of patina happen in your life. You'll love it. And uh, people say that thing looks cool when you're running down the road. So anyway, uh, till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue and uh, hop on over to Smoker Builder U if you haven't already and uh, take advantage of some of our online courses over there. We'll see you later.